I count it a privilege to bring you week 12 in a study in 2 Corinthians. You know, I look back over the last almost two years now and see where God has brought this ministry to. You know, we started this this In Him Scripture study, the, the one we do on this card, almost two years ago. And then the Lord led us into Romans, 1 Corinthians, and 2 Corinthians. This is, it, it's amazing. We've been in this 12 weeks. And the longer we study these epistles of Paul, the more we realize that just how important it is to find out the the place that we have in God's in God's plan in his church and and that's very important for any person that that is born again that they come to realize and understand that they have a place in God's in God's kingdom a place in 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 the church and that is to be a light and a vessel wherever they go and I'm convinced of it until we find out who God says we are, we'll never be used to our full potential in his kingdom. God will never be able to, to use us uh, the way he wants to use us. Not that he can't use us the way we are, but I'm talking about to use us to a point of, my goodness, can you believe what, what, I, what just materialized in my life? I, I would have never in a million years thought that we would have reached so many people with this ministry, that this this podcast would be approved in over 900 jails and prisons at the time of this recording. Now, this is this recording won't go out for another couple of months, so I don't know how many jails and prisons will be, I mean, available that, you know, that this podcast will be available to them, but... My goodness, it, God's made it possible for this ministry to reach the masses. And, and we're not stopping until the whole almost 6,300 jails and prisons are being touched. And I, that, that brings me to something. I want to ask you to consider helping us reach those pre- jails and prisons. Reach, the, reach out to the world that we live in. You realize that over 2 million People are incarcerated in the United States of America. And and now reaching them, 2.4 million of them, the last count I had. And, and can you imagine how many family members that we can reach through this podcast going into these jails and prisons? It, it thrills me to be able to, to say that I'm a part of what God is doing in the prisons, in the jails, in people's lives that that feel like that they've just been forgotten about, that, that feel like that they are the prodigal son of this world and, and don't know how to get back to where they, where they once was or where they want to be with him. See, I, that's the thing. When I, when I grew up as a Christian, I didn't want to go back to where I had, had been in my life. I wanted to go further. I wanted to be used, be used to God wherever he wanted me to be. And, and, and honey, it has, it has changed the way I look at my life. And I, I know that finding out who you are in Christ Jesus, your Lord and Savior, will change yours. So listen to me today. Listen to this podcast. Go back to June 21st of 2021 and get hold of who God has made you to be in Christ Jesus, your Lord and Savior. And come through this study with us. L- listen to every one of them. From June 21st, 21, until today, come and catch up and find out what God is saying to you, for you, and about you in His Word. Glory to God, I count it a privilege to bring you these prayers, my prayers that I've adopted out of Paul's prayers for the Ephesians. This is my prayer for the world, that they come to realize and know just how much God loves them. Ephesians 1.15 says, Ever since I first heard of your strong faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for God's people everywhere, I have not stopped thanking God for you. I pray for you constantly, asking God, the glorious Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, to give you spiritual wisdom and insight so that you might grow in your knowledge of God. I pray that your hearts will be flooded with light so that you can understand the confident hope He has given to those He called. 
his holy people, who are his rich and glorious inheritance. I also pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe him. This is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead and seated him in the place of honor at God's right hand in the heavenly realms. Now he is far above any ruler or authority or power or leader or anything else, not only in this world, but also in the world to come. God has put all things under the authority of Christ and has made him head over all things for the benefit of the church. And the church is his body. It is made full and complete by Christ, who fills all things everywhere with himself. Ephesians 3.14 says, When I think of all this, I fall to my knees and pray to the Father, the creator of everything in heaven and on earth. I pray that from his glorious unlimited resources, he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. And may you have the power to understand as all God's people should. How wide, how long, how high, and how deep his love is. May you experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to understand fully. Then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Now all glory to God who is able, through his mighty power at work within us, to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. Glory to him in the church and in Christ Jesus. Through all generations, forever and ever, I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, I, I, we've got a scripture today that it, it thrills me to be able to bring to you this scripture because this is an example of knowing who he has made you, who he made you to be, who Jesus Christ made you to be. This is Paul. Paul just just talking about it and 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 seeing it. And uh, first of all, I want, I want to pray. Father, I praise you and I thank you. God, for your word. Lord, give me what I need to say today about this scripture. Oh, it's so precious to my heart. For what Paul done that we can do also. Lord, I thank you and I praise you for all you're doing. All you have done and all you're going to do. In Jesus' holy name I pray. Amen. We're, we're going to be in uh, 2 Corinthians 7 and 2. And I want to read the, the New Living and the Amplified Classic first. It says, please open the New Living Translation for 2 Corinthians 7 and 2. It says, please open your hearts to us. We have done, we have not done wrong to anyone or led anyone astray nor taken advantage of anyone. This uh, the Amplified Classic for this verse. It says, "Do not open your ha- do open your hearts. I'm sorry. Do open your hearts to us again. Enlarge them to take us in. We have wronged no man. We have betrayed or corrupted no one. We have cheated or take not or we have we have cheated or taken advantage of no one." Let me read the the. Uh, uh, the King James Version of this verse. It says, Receive us, for we have wronged no man. We have corrupted no man. We have defrauded no man. Now, I'm going to tell you something right now. Paul was was a being the picture of an example of who Jesus Christ made him into to being, made him... Uh, a man that had been made into being a new creature and and knowing it. Because you look at at Paul's life before his uh, uh, experience with Christ on the Damascus Road. He went and took it upon himself. It was his mission in life to corrupt, to hurt, to beat down any anyone that was uh, living for Christ. He went went after the church wholeheartedly, but yet 
he says right here, receive us. We have wronged no man. Now, if he hadn't, if he, he stood while Stephen was stoned, condoning the act when his name was Saul, he, he, he sought out people to, to imprison because they proclaimed Jesus as their Lord. He, they proclaimed Jesus for what he was, and that was the Messiah. He went out of his way to just, I'm talking about, hurt people and, and, and be a detriment to the, to the, uh, to the, the new church, the, the Christian church. And, and really, it wasn't the, the Christian church. It was God's church, Christ's church. And when we go to look in it at, at, at ourselves and we f- uh, fail to understand that 2 Corinthians 5, 17, just a few chapters before this one, uh, just two chapters before this one, I mean, it's really literally in the same, don't even have to turn the page. It says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Well, Paul was being the example that he just talked about in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, right here in in front of these people. He said, we have wronged no man. But yet I promise you there was people that knew what Paul had done when his name was Saul. He had wronged a lot of people. He had just 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 been a detriment and and a hurt and a uh, I'm talking about a, a, an evil thing that when it come against the church and but yet he stood up and he said, "We have wronged no man. We have corrupted no man. We have defrauded no man." That's someone that has taken his experience, taken what Jesus Christ done in his life and forgot about the things that was behind him and and wasn't even acknowledging that they had taken place. He said, I've no, uh, we've, no, we've wronged no man, but yet, you know, months or, well, no, not months. Uh, it was years before he had... He had completely just, I'm talking about being a, a, a vicious, uh, a vicious attacker of the church. But yet today, that day when he stood up and said that, he said, my goodness, he, he was making a, a statement. I know who I am. I know what my experience with Jesus Christ made me to be. He is my Lord he he is my savior he died to make me free and that's that's the what what we need to to see and understand in our own lives that i don't care how bad you feel about your uh your past your track record or even your prison record you may have been you may have been in a bad spot in your life, in your life, in your past. But if 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 God has set you free, you're free indeed through Christ Jesus, because Jesus Christ took everything upon Himself to make you that new creature that Paul talked about in Second Corinthians five, and Paul was being an example of that, knowing who he was, who he made you to be, knowing who he made you to be. I mean, Paul was being an example of that. He knew who God had made him to be in Christ Jesus, his Lord and Savior. And I want you to get hold of what I'm doing in this study, in this in this podcast, and that is find out what God made you to be. And it's the same new creature that he made Paul to be. You see, Paul, uh, or God's no respecter of Paul. 
what he are no no respecter of person, excuse me. What he done for Paul, he'll do for you. He'll do for me. He has done for me. And I'm not going to allow the devil to tell me any different because the devil wants to distract you to a point that that you can't see what God has done because salvation's by faith and everything that that salvation brings to you will be will be received by the same faith that it took you to be saved with and satan wants to you to keep, keep to keep you so blinded to that 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 you can't get anything done in your life because you're so wound up and and upset about the things that are going on around you no Paul didn't. Paul went into this thing and says, "I've done no wrong to anybody." <laughs> in other words, he's saying Jesus forgave me for that. He's made me that new creature in Him. Now, my past don't mean a thing. It may me. It may mean something to a lot of people in this world. But I assure you, my past, my past, Stacy Hayes's past, does not mean one thing to me. Because I know what God has done for me. I know that the sacrifice that that Jesus Christ made for me has transformed me into a new creature. That I can stand before God and say, I am your righteousness in Christ Jesus, my Lord and Savior. Because Jesus is righteous, I am righteous. And I can stand with all confidence in the world and say that. And that is what I want I want to instill in you, that you can find out and understand just how good, just how good God is through that salvation, just how good he has made you to be in Christ Jesus, your Lord and Savior, because what he is, you are. I, listen to me. God loves you, and he wants more than anything in the world for you to know not only that you're saved, but that that you are strong, you you are accepted, you are loved in Christ Jesus, your Lord and Savior. And your past doesn't mean a thing to God. If, if, If you have been born again today, God has forgotten your past. And he looks at you through Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior. And let me tell you something. I promise you, if God's forgot about it, who am I to bring it up? Who Who is anyone to bring it up? I'm going to say this. Furthermore, who are you to bring it up? Because God forgive you and he forgot about it. Let it go. Get it, Get rid of it. Cast it away because it's not you anymore. You are in Christ Jesus, your Lord and Savior. And you can walk strong in that, knowing who he made you to be. Not just like Paul. I, you can say, I've, I've wronged no man. I've corrupted no man. I have defrauded no man. And you, you may have done all three in your past. But God has forgiven you. He's forgiven you. Won't you accept that forgiveness? Won't you accept and know who you are? Made to be in Christ Jesus, your Lord and Savior. It'll set you free. I promise you it will. But I'm going to ask you a question today. If you're listening to this podcast, and I know there's millions of people that you know, that are on this planet that that have the opportunity to listen to this podcast that are not born again. Thousands have listened to this podcast that are not born again. I know it in my heart. But I want you to understand something today. You can be born again. I'm asking you, do you want to? Romans 10 and 9 says, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and thou shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, it says you shall be saved. It says, For what the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. That's all it takes to be born again. Religion wants to make it tough. Religion wants to make salvation hard. It's not. I promise you it's not. Listen to me today. Make Jesus Lord. Confess him as Lord. Confess him. Romans 10 and 9 says, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, 
and believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, it says you shall be saved. It don't say you might be if you're good enough. It says with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. That's all it takes to be born again. Won't you be born again today? Won't you allow Jesus Christ to come into your heart, into your life, and save you? Make Jesus Christ Lord of your life today and watch him change your life forever. Glory to God. Hey, listen, if you're a partner of this ministry, I want to personally thank you. I thank God for faithful partners that do what they do, sowing into this ministry, helping us exist in this world as a ministry, helping us give God's word away, helping us edify the world lifting them up and showing them who God has made them to be in Christ Jesus, their, their Lord and Savior. Partners, thank you. I pray Mark 10, 29, and 30 over you today. A hundredfold return over everything that you sow into this ministry. Oh, I thank God for faithful partners that do just that. Oh, I thank, I thank God for people that, that want to further God's kingdom and teach them what God says about them. Now, if you're not a partner, pray about becoming a partner. Pray about what God would have you to do to sow into his kingdom today. Go to our website. Get in touch with us. You got a prayer request? Send it to me. It's the-prodigalson.com. 